So my wife is quite the crafter. And right now she's gotten into making these tumblers for which she needs a motorized tumbler turner such as this one which holds six different tumblers at a time. Give you a quick example. Hit this switch and it starts turning. Notice how nice and quiet that is. Okay, so as you can see work has exploded for her. We've got cups all over our house and so we have a friend who just moved out uh, to Alaska and she's no longer using her turner so I'm taking apart her turner and putting together a new one just like this one and I'm going to be showing you how to put together one of these six turner tumbler turners. So here's a look at everything that we're going to need in order to construct our uh, six motor table turner. We have M4.70 by 12 uh, machine screws. These are going to be used to attach uh, the end caps to the motor itself. Then we have M4.70 by 25 uh, screws. Those are going to be used to attach the end caps to the top for the drying racks. We got six wing nuts. They're number 10 by 24. Those are going to be used in conjunction with these to make sure that the uh, end caps for the drying rack stay in place. Then we've got washers to make sure that everything is stable. We have number eight by one and a half inch wood screws, which will attach the uh, wooden planks to the base. We have uh, the smaller wood screws, number four by half inch wood screws, and we'll need 12 of those. And those are going to be used for attaching the motors and the cabinet rollers to the planks. Six cabinet rollers. These are actually uh, uh, cabinet roller catches and they work very well. We have gray topped wire twist uh, electrical caps. This is going to be used to attach our wiring instead of using the clips that come with the motors which is absolutely horrible. We have Christie's Red Hot Blue Glue PVC Pipe Cement. Now you can buy any kind that you like but it must be PVC pipe cement. And once this stuff sets, your stuff's never coming apart. We've got super glue in order to uh, maintain a good contact with the screws uh, to the plastic PVC, but I think instead we're gonna be going with the PVC pipe cement uh, instead of the super glue. And we have wood glue for attaching our planks to uh, each other in, or to the base. So here's our two foot by four foot base. It is half inch thick. Our planks, they're both eight feet long uh, to begin with, but since I've already built one, one of the, uh, the six inch wide has already been cut in half, and that was what was left over from my last project. But I got a full board here of the eight inch wide, which we'll be cutting in half later. And that is gonna be used uh, for the sides, the six inch is going to be for the top, and here are the tools that we're going to need. We're going to need a saw to cut that board. We're going to need counter sinks uh, for our screws. We're going to need drill bits for our uh, to pre-drill holes for our screws. Then we have our uh, wood um, wood bits for drilling the holes into the planks where the PVC pipe is going to go through. PVC pipe cutter, measuring tape, a Phillips head screwdriver, cordless drill, and for attaching the wires to the plank itself, we have this uh, uh, wonderful little staple gun right here. And these are the type of staples that come with it, T25, 3 8 inch, 10 millimeter, and they work very well. They're the perfect width for the, uh, the cables on the switches. So here is our PVC pipe and all the little connections that we need. This includes the mounting rack on top and the motor connection and things of that nature. Now the part numbers and all will be down in the description because I know firsthand that finding all this stuff at Lowe's or Home Depot can be quite a nightmare. So um, 
all that information will be down there. I'm not going to go over a bunch of part numbers and stuff here. But right here is where we have everything that we need for our motor connection to include six six inch long three quarter inch pieces of PVC pipe. This is what we'll need for the drying rack. We have uh, end caps and we have the adapters, that three quarter inch to half inch adapter, uh, which we'll use to screw the sticks onto for the drying rack. And then this is everything that we're gonna need to set up uh, the motor for our turners. Next, we have our motors and switches with connectors. Uh, I am repurposing an old uh, turner that we got from a friend. So you can see there's nine different motors here. Uh, we're only going to be using six. Not all motors are the same. Some have blue wires, some have black wires. It's not going to make any difference. Right now I only have five switches, trying to locate a sixth. But if I can't, then I'll show you how to safely and properly hook up uh, two motors to a single switch. Do not try and hook up more than two motors to a single uh, switch. That is very bad news for both the motor and for your electrical uh, connections. All right, so the first order of business is to cut our eight foot long, eight inch wide board. Now, if this is the first time you're doing this and you have an eight foot long, six inch wide board, you're gonna have to do the same thing. Now the thing is, is that these boards that aren't actually eight feet long, they're usually a little bit longer. Uh, and in this case, we have eight feet and a quarter inches. So don't just measure four feet down, make your line and start cutting, because you're gonna be off by just a little bit and your boards aren't gonna be the same length. So since this is eight feet and a quarter inches, that means we need to go to four feet and one eighth inches to uh, make our line and make our cut. So I'm going to use a handy dandy carpenter square and I'm going to come down here to four feet and one eighth and make a mark. All right. So there's our mark. I'm going to line up my carpenter square. You can use any kind of straight edge that you want. Make a line all the way across. You want your line to be all the way across because we're cutting this by hand since we have minimal tools available and we want to make sure that we're going to get a nice straight cut. Now, in order to get a nice straight cut, what you're going to do is you're just going to start. Don't try and dig in real hard. You put your blade right on the line and start with a notch usually easiest to start by pulling. There we go. So now we have a nice start and what we want to do is is we want to start leaning the saw back along our line right here to make sure that we get a nice straight cut. Now I believe these boards are treated so cutting them going using the normal back and forth takes a little bit Nice and slow to start off. Start leaning back just a little bit. And here we are leaning the blade back. And making sure that we're following along that line. All right, so there we have our two halves. And if we stand them up next to one another, Oh yeah, nice and even, all right, and that's going to be important uh, because these are going to be the back wall where the motors are going to get mounted and the front wall where the PVC is going to stick out. So it's important that these two are the same. So now it's time to prep our 8 inch boards for having the holes drilled in them uh, for the PVC pipe to stick through and for the uh, motor to to attach to. The important thing to know about this is that you need to decide what is going to be the top and what is going to be the front facing parts of the board. Okay, so that everything is going to line up the way it should when it's attached to the baseboard. Okay, 
Now, I wasn't allowed to pick these boards out when I went to Lowe's because they had the aisle closed, and so I wound up with this crummy side right here. I'm gonna choose this to be my top side that the six inch board is going to drill into. I have that on both boards. Now, the way I like to do this is I like to have the, uh, the machine cut side of the board, the side uh, that we didn't cut with the handsaw, I want this to be the same on both boards. So both of these, you can see the tag is still on it right here uh, from, uh, from Lowe's. All right, so these are both gonna be the left side and I want the side facing me uh, right now to be my front. So I'm just gonna mark them. This is my front. left. And I'll do the same up here. This is the front left. So if I'm sitting facing what will soon be my uh, turner, then this will be the left hand side and these, the top face that we're looking at right now will be the side that's facing me. Okay, so how do we get these things spaced evenly? Well luckily I've done the math for us. And what we want is we want to have five and a quarter inches from the bottom, okay? And we're gonna start, our first hole is going to be four inches in. Then there will be eight inches between every hole. Now the best way to do this is to get a straight line all the way down the boards. And what we're gonna to do to achieve that is use some sewing thread. So once we've marked our five and a quarter uh, from the bottom on both sides of the board, both the left and the right, what I'll do is I'll tape uh, one end of this sewing thread and I will tape it to both ends. And then what I will do is, is I will use a straight edge to start the line on both ends, and then I will use a different kind of straight edge, one that doesn't have a lip like my uh, carpenter square, uh, to make sure that the line gets all the way across. All right, so let's get started. Okay, if you are lucky enough to have a carpenter square, what you can do is, is you line up the flat end against your board right here. They should have a ruler on this edge right here and you just put your pencil on the five and the quarter and carefully follow it all the way down the board. I now have my line all the way down both boards and so now I'm going to come in and I'm going to mark four inches And now I need to mark every eight inches beyond that. So that puts us at 12. That puts us at 20. And this is where the different holes will be for six different holes. Okay, so once those, once all of my marks are made, then I can use a straight edge, such as my carpenter square, come in and I want to make an intersecting line with the horizontal line. So this part right here, this is this is what we're interested in. X marks the spot, that's where we'll put the tip of it so that we know that we're dead center every time. I now have everything marked. So there's six on each board. The first one is four inches in, and then the other five are eight inches apart to the last one which should be just about four inches from the edge of the board now the reason that we always start with the same side remember is that the boards aren't exactly four feet long like they should be in this case they're about four and four feet and one eighth of an inch so we want to make sure that we're always starting on that front left side to make sure that everything is going to be lined up perfectly Next comes the hard part, the hardest part of this whole thing, and that's drilling the holes at these points. So next we have to drill holes big enough for a three-quarter inch PVC pipe to fit through. 
they need to be big enough so that the PVC pipe doesn't rub on the sides, but small enough so that our cabinet rollers can support it and still reach the PVC pipe. Now, this is three quarter inch PVC pipe. That means that it's three quarters of an inch inside. There we go. So, what we're gonna need instead is to use a bit that's one and a quarter inches, and that will give us our large enough hole for our pipe to fit through and for our cabinet rollers to be able to reach the pipe. Okay, this is by far the hardest part of the entire thing. Now, what you don't want to do is drill all the way through from one side to the other, because what will happen is when it comes out the back, it will splinter the wood and it won't be smooth on the side. So instead, what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna drill all the way through until we poke a hole in the other side with the little tip here. And then, just like X marks the spot on this side, We'll have a nice little hole on this side to show us where to start and then we'll we'll drill from the back to the front so that it meets so that the hole finishes off in the center of the board and that'll keep the board from splintering so put the point directly on the x push down a little bit to get it started and when you get to the edges if you do the edges of this this is a two-person job it's been unsafe to try and do it by yourself, all right? You need somebody to hold the board steady. Okay, so here we go. All right, so if you see right here, we have our nice little pinhole sticking through. That's gonna be our X marks the spot on the back side, and now we'll finish drilling the hole from this back side. So stick our, our point in there and let's get started. All right, so there we go. All right, so we can see our three quarter inch PVC pipe fits in there with plenty of wiggle room, all right, but not so much that our cabinet rollers are not going to be able to, to uh, touch it. All right, so let's get this thing finished. The holes are now drilled, and I know some of them look a few janky. My drill went out on me, so I borrowed a drill from a friend. His drill was apparently nuclear powered, but it doesn't matter as long as we can mount the cabinet uh, rollers on the front and the motor on the back. It doesn't really matter how it looks, just that it works. Uh, I took some 80 grit sandpaper uh, and went around the edges a little bit, get all the big splinters out and stuff like that. And so now the next step is to mount this to the baseboard. All right, so the bit that I'm using is a one half inch countersink, and that's what we're going to use to drill these countersink holes. We're going to now mark our places where we're gonna drill our countersink holes for the boards that are going on the top. So, what we need, okay. So right now, this is our six inch wide board and that's gonna be the topper. And I've got it laid up so that it's even with the base of the board, with the baseboard I mean, okay? and that's gonna be our starting guide. What we're gonna do is, is we're gonna use the six inch board and draw a straight line all the way across the board as our first marker for where our sinkholes are gonna go. All right, that's done, and the line is super faint, but it's there, okay? And that, we cannot drill beyond that line. Now, the boards are three quarters of an inch thick. So, we need to uh, make holes that are half of that beyond our line here towards the back side of the baseboard. Half of three quarters is three eighths, so we want to be three eighths of an inch, all right, away from this line to draw our countersinks. And it really just depends how many uh, screws that you want to you put in. Uh, I like to put in a good six or eight screws 
all right, to make sure that this thing is gonna be super sturdy. Okay, my countersink holes are now drilled out, and notice that I didn't drill a hole into the countersink holes. That's because we're gonna be using wood screws to attach this baseboard to the two boards on top. So I don't want a hole, I want the wood screw to be able to grab onto the wood and lock everything into place. Okay, so now that that's done, the bottom of our board is prepped, we can flip it over and get ready to attach the two boards with the holes in the fronts. So here's the top of our board. And once again, we're gonna use our six inch piece and we're gonna line it up. so that the edges are even all the way down. Okay. Good, 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 good. Everything is lined up real nice. And what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna draw yet another line using the six inch board as our straight edge. Okay, so now we have our boards. And remember, we marked front left. Okay, and so these are going to get mounted here, and the front is this way. And what we're going to do, and the reason we've made the line is because this is the line right here is going to show us where to go, and it's going to line up with our countersinks. All right, so that's how that's going to go. And then the second board, and the second board, front left. Is going to go here now now the important thing is remember how we started everything on this side so this is the side that we're going to line up we're going to make sure that this corner right here is lined up to the corner of the baseboard and that this corner right here is lined up to the corner of the line that we drew using the six inch wide board okay i tell you all this to tell you how we're going to attach them so for this, you'll need your wood glue. We're gonna take the wood glue. We're gonna put a nice, healthy dose down, this, down the end, and then we're going to put it in place. Once both boards are glued into place, then we'll take our six inch board and just lay it on top. And then, using some of your favorite textbooks, we'll place them on top to push everything down into place. Now, of course, if we had better tools and stuff, we'd be using uh, clamps, but I'm assuming, like me, you're, living, uh, you're in a type of situation where you don't have all the best tools in the world, which is why I'm making this video. If you don't have any textbooks, shame on you. Go to amazon.com and pick up some. And of course, you can always subscribe to my channel, Mind Distillery, where I teach you a bunch of stuff out of a lot of these textbooks, amongst other things. Okay, so we're going to glue these in place, and we're going to clamp it down, and we're going to uh, wait for a few hours for everything to dry. So this is the corner right here we want to make sure is lined up perfectly. We'll come down to this end and make sure that this is flush all the way down. All right, time for the second one. Okay, here's our second board bad boy around and I want to line up this side right here Oops. down here on this side so we want to make sure that this is flush right here and then we'll come down here and make sure that the lines that the line is lined up all the way through okay now we'll take our six inch stick it on top carefully so it's not knock your boards around. And now textbook time. We've got 
C++ how to program, organic chemistry, university physics, microelectronic circuits, and some advanced engineering mathematics, just to be certain. Okay, we're going to let that dry for a few hours. Okay, so the instructions say to allow the glue to dry for 30 minutes, but I like to let it set for longer than that just to be on the safe side. Because now what we're about to do is very dangerous, at least for the glue. Because what we need to do now is take all of our textbooks and stuff off and stack them, and we need to flip this thing over, okay? So the only thing that's holding these boards right here to the base is the glue. So the last thing that we want it to do is uh, put too much force sideways onto that glue, breaking it off. But here's what we're going to do. We need to stack up our textbooks so that they're about the same height as these boards right here. That one's a little short, but that's okay. I got the perfect height right here. So I'm going to set these aside for now. Okay. So, in, the best way to flip this over is to use a friend and to flip it this way. Do not flip it this way because when you flip it this way, now these boards are uh, pushing against that glue and it can uh, cause it to fall. The thing you need to watch out for when you're flipping it this way is that these don't hit the table causing it uh, undue stress onto that glue. Okay, so I'm going to use my uh, handy assistant here who's holding the camera and uh, have her help me flip this thing over. So the next time uh, you see me this will be flipped over and this right here will be propped up by these textbooks. Okay, now that that's flipped Here's what we're going to need next. We're going to need our drill with a 1 16th inch bit. We're going to need our wood screws, the one and a half inch long. And of course, you'll need a Phillips head bit in order to screw those in. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is, is we're going to drill holes into every single one of the uh, spots where we made countersinks. Now we can change the bit out. and screw in our base to our front boards. Okay, now we can flip this thing over with no fear. this. And looky there, if you look down both sides of these boards, you will not see a single screw. You'll see a lot of wood glue, <laughs> some of which is still wet. And to get up the, the excess wood glue, just a damp cloth will work just fine. And then rinse it out underneath the sink and it'll rinse right out. Okay, I need to walk my dog. Okay, so I'm going to show you the next part of the video, which is going to be mounting the motor. But first, let me show you how this is going to go together. This is important because it's going to help us center the motor into the circles back there. Alright, so this is the 3 quarter inch plug threaded. You'll notice on this side there's some black lines. So it's in the shape of an octagon, so when you connect... Um, corner to corner, where the lines intersect will be the dead center. 
Now the hole that we're going to drill, we're going to drill in three parts because we want to make sure that we get this as close to center as possible so that our turner doesn't wobble as it turns. And PVC pipe is different uh, than wood when it comes to drilling because it's plastic. Okay, so first we drill a hole, we drill a starter hole with the 1 16th, in, 1 16th inch bit. Once that's done, we move on to the 8th inch bit and drill a slightly larger hole. Finally, we use a 3 16th inch bit to make the final hole and be very careful when you do it because this 3 16th inch bit will grip the cap and try and turn it in your hand. Okay, so make sure that you, uh, you change directions of the bit and go in and out to try and clean off the bits, the plastic pieces that are going to become glued to the sides here and run your finger in there and try and clean out the inside. Okay, so how does this all go together? Well, we're going to use some of the uh, PVC pipe cement and put it down in that hole right there. You're definitely going to want to have something uh, underneath this in case some of that seeps through. Now we take our washer and our uh, M4-70 by 12 screw, that's the small one. Use our Phillips head screwdriver, hopefully yours is magnetic. And then we're going to take that and we're going to put it through the hole. All right. That then screws into the end, the copper piece of the motor. Make sure you get it nice and tight, but don't strip the screw. There we go. And the, and the cement that's in there will keep that from coming undone as it twists, just in case your PVC pipe gets caught up on something. The next piece is a three quarter inch adapter slip and thread. So it's threaded on this side, and it slips on this side, it's smooth. That gets screwed into here. And again, we're gonna use PVC uh, pipe cement right there to make sure that that stays glued into place. Then more PVC pipe cement in here, and we attach our six inch long, three quarter inch PVC pipe. Now this should be sticking out the front at this point. We're going to put some more PVC pipe cement inside this adapter. This is a half inch, three quarter inch adapter thread and slip. So that slips onto that side and that is the full motorized setup. Your uh, poles that your tumblers will go on can just screw onto here and then when you're done screw them off and then we'll be able to screw them on the top of this to let them dry. So that's how this is all going to go together. Okay, this plug cannot fit through one of those holes. So what we are going to do is take this all apart. And now we're going to move with our pencil to the back of the setup. Okay, so pencil, motor, back of the setup. Okay, luckily this is up at the very top of the motor, so it's really easy to see if you're centered. There we go. If you're centered in the hole, you can eyeball it. Luckily, we've got our lines right here that we drew when we were lining up for our holes and that can help guide us as well. When you feel like it's centered, hold it tight, use your pencil, and blacken in one hole on each side of the motor. And that is where our wood screws are gonna go. Do that for all six, and then we can screw in the wood screws that are gonna hold these in place. Okay, now that we've got our holes marked right here, we're gonna start. There we 
go. Give that a good press. I don't know why I've got it through the thing. Right in the dead center of it, press in, making a good indentation. The screw should be able to stick out just like that. Okay. Now I can stick this in here. All right. Just want it in there until it catches. Don't screw it all the way down. Grab your next one. Find that indent that you made. Okay. There we go. Now we can hold this and finish her off. All right, you just want it so that it's tight. If you keep going, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna strip out the hole that's in the wood. Okay, we're gonna do that for all of the, uh, the holes back here. And there we have the finished product. Looks nice, huh? But one thing I can't stand is this wire situation. So I'm gonna be fixing that next. What I'm gonna do is is I'm going to drill holes uh, using a very large bit uh, right into the wood in order to run those cables inside so that all the connections are actually going to be inside the box. All right, there we go. I used a 3 8 inch bit in order to hog out a nice good size hole there. I don't know if my friend's going to be able to come through with uh, the last switch that I need, but that's okay. I'll be able to come up with something because I got some extra switches and I have some wire. So all the connections, the electrical connections are gonna be done inside. And that is what we're gonna be doing next. Okay, the connectors that come with the motors are pretty much garbage, all right? That's why I have on my parts list these electrical connection, these electrical connection caps right here. Uh, they're the gray caps, which is a very small gauge, and that is needed because these are very small wires. Now to properly wire this thing, uh, the switch, which I've run through the, the 316 inch hole in the back, uh, the switch is almost a solid wire. You really can't unravel it. However, these are unrav unravelable they can be unraveled and so that's what you want to do you want to try and unravel these as much as possible in order to get a good connection what you got to do is is you got to wrap these wires around the other wires so there we go this one's pretty good and unraveled and so we connect the two and we just wrap this loose wire around the solid wire. And now we take our connector cap and it's not just a cap. There's a piece of metal in there and it acts like a screw. Okay, so righty tighty, lefty loosey. You stick it on there and you screw it down until you about can't screw anymore. There we go. And now the connection is secure. That thing will work forever. Let me see if I can unravel this guy right here. These are pre-used, so they're, uh, they've are they already been twisted up and untwisted and stuff. But I think I've about got this guy figured out. Okay. So he's unraveled a little bit. Just enough so I can get him wrapped around the other guy there but not to worry Mr. Wire Connection Cap right here is going to do the rest of the work for me there we go 
and that is how you make a proper electrical connection. Now, if we plug this in, we'll see it turn. Okay, we got her plugged in. Turn it on and watch it turn. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, so our motor works and that's good. So let's wire up the rest of these and then we'll move on uh, to creating the PVC element that's going to then uh, screw into those, cop uh, those brass pieces there. Everything's now wired up. I have tested all of the motors. They all work. They all turn. And they're all pretty silent. Except for that one weird guy on the end there. I don't know what brand that is. These are the ones that you're probably seeing on Amazon going uh, at three at a time. or sell them, They sell them three at a time or six at a time. They are very silent and very good motors. Uh, I recommend you th that you get those. Uh, for this project. Alright, so we're looking good. The next thing is uh, we're going to cement the bolts into the three quarter inch threaded plugs and screw those into the brass ends of the motor. I now have the plugs screwed in. Uh, for some reason one washer wouldn't work so I had to double up and by the way the easiest way to get the pipe cement down into the three-quarter inch plug is to use a q-tip that worked really really well and then um, so that should be nice and solid so hopefully it'll, we will never have any issues with slipping though I don't know how two washers rubbing together uh, is going to do okay so the next part we're going to do uh, the threaded end first and then we'll cement the slip end and then insert the, the three-quarter inch. That would be the way to do it. Alright, let's get started. Everything up to the three-quarter inch PVC pipe is now connected. The only thing else that needs to be cemented into place is the half inch to three quarter inch adapter threaded and slip. But before we do that, we're going to attach the cabinet rollers. Now you may think that the cabinet rollers are simply to keep these from drooping down once the cup is on. However, these are pretty stiff. And you'll notice that our holes aren't 100% lined up. This one right here is probably gonna rub on this side right here. And that'll cause uh, issues with the motor and it'll make noise. Making noise is probably worse than, the, than uh, something happening to the motor, to be quite honest. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to attach the cabinet rollers wherever we need to create some distance with the PVC pipe and the edge of the wall. So in this case, this roller will go here and push out slightly on the PVC pipe. Now, the PVC pipe will roll against the rollers and not rub up against the, the wood panel. Okay, what we need to do is, is we need to create the distance that we want, then we need to mark our holes and then use the exact same wood screws that we use to screw in the motors on the back. And that's how we're gonna do this. All right. That's Spuddy. He's a good boy. So there we have the cabinet roller in place. Now you notice that the cabinet rollers have uh, a long section there where to put the screw. And you want the screw to be as far forward uh, as it possibly can so that the force of the PVC pipe pushing against it won't cause it to slide backwards. Now if we take a look around our PVC pipe, oh yes, we have distance all the way around. And if we put a little bit of pressure on the top, it doesn't even sink down and uh, rub the bottom. So our cabinet roller is in a good position. And shoot, you know, if you absolutely had to, you could add more cabinet rollers 
around it and put that thing right in the dead center if you like. But I think this will do for now. Okay, so for each one of these, we'll add cabinet rollers to where they're needed. And if it's uh, fairly uh, centered, then we will add it to the bottom to make sure that the added weight of the cup doesn't cause it to rub on the bottom. But anywhere else, we'll add the cabinet roller in order to keep it away from the walls. All right, so I'll take care of the next five, and I'll see you in the next part of the video where we're attaching the adapter. And there we go. I know a lot of those look really strange, but like I said, it's in order to keep the pipe away from the walls. Trust me, it makes a horrendous sound, and it's bad for the, for the motor. Okay, so next up, we have our adapters, our half inch to three quarter inch, threaded by slip. And we're going to put the PVC pipe cement on the slip side, and then we're going to slip it onto the three quarter inch. After that, we're going to attach, uh, or not attach the top, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the six inch wide plank and we're going to prep it for uh, being mounted on the top here. All right. So here's my six inch board. It's actually five and a half inches. So my middle line was at two and three quarter inches and I drew it straight down. And then I made a mark at four inches from the edge and then every eight inches in between so that it will line up with my rollers here. Okay, so the next thing is to drill holes at these points. No need for countersinks. And then uh, we'll put in the screws, the wing nuts, and we'll have to drill holes in the, uh, in the slip adapter, which is one of these. All right, so it's like the end cap we have to drill a hole in the center of it, just like we did the, um, the ones that got attached to the motors. So the way this is gonna work is, there's going to be uh, a hole drilled, and then there will be a uh, wing nut and a washer on the bottom side, and this time the, uh, the top of the bolt is gonna go through the cap here with a washer. The bottom of this is going to be super glued to the top of our board here. So that will be super glued there. The bolt will go down uh, into that, and on the bottom side, it'll be tightened into place with a washer and a wing nut. So we'll see here in just a second. Okay, we got the top finished. So what we have here, <clears throat> we have the bolt with a washer that goes through the middle of the plug, which is through the hole that's drilled, and then a washer and a wing nut on the other side. Now, I kind of made a boo-boo, and I lied about which bolt that actually is. The original bolt that uh, I showed you in the very beginning is wrong. This is a number eight, 32 by one and a half inch. All right, machine screw. All right, this is the size, that, the size that you actually need so that it'll reach all the way through, okay? So this is what you're gonna need uh, for the top. Okay, so this baby is pretty much done besides uh, the cage that I'm gonna put on the outside of it, but I'll leave that for a separate video. This is just how to make this. All right, so the, all that leaves then is attaching uh, the top portion here to the rest of the turner, which is very, very simple. All we're gonna do is, is we're gonna line up our board on the edge here, okay? And make sure that it's flush. Again, starting with the front left, okay? We're gonna make sure that uh, the board on both sides matches this, this flush here and here, and we're gonna drill um, 
pocket holes using our half inch um, uh, pocket hole bit and then we'll drill another hole using the um, the 16th inch uh, bit for the wood screw to go into okay we're not going to glue it or anything like that because we want to be able to take this off in case something goes haywire with our um, with our motors and we need to get to the electrical and stuff okay so that's all we have left to do and after I am done with that we'll close out this uh, this little tutorial here alrighty so I have the countersinks drilled I know I kept calling them something else before I already forget what it was pocket holes I know I kept calling them pocket holes before but they're called countersinks and I decided six bolts six wood screws is all I need uh, to hold this baby down so I drilled uh, my first one using the 16th inch uh, drill bit pilot hole and put in the first wood screw so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make sure that this guy's lined up for the second one drill that pilot and then uh, Make sure it's lined up for this last one. There we go. All right. And then once this backboard is is uh, lined up, instead of drilling pilot holes for the front one, what I'm going to do is is I'm going to make sure. Go back over here. I'm going to make sure that this board is flush with the top board all the way down. Okay. So it's nice and clean. I think that's how I'm gonna do it. The the uh, the pilot hole isn't necessary. It's just something um, just in case. But I mean, this is a three quarter inch thick, uh, so it's not gonna split the wood or anything. Uh, you know, I measured out uh, where the uh, the pocket hole was gonna go um, or the countersink and that is uh, three-eighths of an inch because that's half of uh, three-quarters so it's definitely not going to split the wood especially if I make sure that uh, the wood is flush with the top of the board okay and then the last thing that I need to do the only thing left will then be to cement these guys the half inch to three quarter inch threaded by slip and uh, install them on here. That'll, that's the only thing that's left. And then this thing is complete. All right, so I'm gonna get to it and I will see you when I am done. And so there it is, it's all done. And that's Bella. Poor thing's blind and has diabetes, but we love her. Hi, Bella. Okay, but we got our uh, our top board all done. And like I said, these aren't you know glued in or anything like that. We want to be able to remove this in case uh, we have to take care of something. But it's flush, pretty much all the way down. Uh, this is the the chewed up end down here. Yay! Thanks, guy at Lowe's. All right, but the front is definitely lined up nice, and that's good. I mean, this is like smooth all the way down. All right, so we did a really good job there. So I'll install the uh, half inch, three quarter inch adapters with the cement, and we'll wrap this up. And there we have it. It is complete, except for the cage that I'm going to put on the outside for my wife, so that this guy doesn't get fur all over cups that have epoxy on them. So these are made for half inch uh, poles, that would be this guy, we got the half inch, and then this is a, uh, and a, a half inch adapter, it's slip on that side, and of course it's threaded on that side. 
and when you have uh, your cup on here, you just simply, there you go, you flip that thing on, it turns. Then when your cup is done, simply take it off and you can stick it up here to dry it. Boom. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this. I think it looks pretty nice. Even if the holes were kind of messed up there in the beginning. The base definitely looks nice, but that is not going to last. That will be covered in epoxy and glitter in no time at all. Alright. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in learning uh, more educational and austere things, please subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button if you like this. Share it around. And you guys have a great day.